Professor, are you seeking to dismantle the encampment at ANU? At this moment in time, Senator Henderson, we believe the encampment is a peaceful protest. Are you involved or engaged in any discussions with protesters behind the encampment with the view to entering into any sort of agreement, as has happened much to my disdain with Melbourne University, Sydney and also UQ? As we said to both Senator Faruqi and Senator Thorpe, we have been in an extended correspondence with some of the members of the encampment uh, to determine a way to have a conversation. I think conversations are hugely important. I think finding ways to create spaces for those conversations really matters, and it's something that we all seek to do. Uh, are you considering as I say, considering entering into any sort of agreement. I understand there are a range of demands from the protesters. Uh, capitulation in any form to any group of people is, I would put to you, of great concern, deeply concerning what has been agreed by the University of Sydney and Melbourne and UQ. Are you looking to go down that path? Now, Senator Henderson, thank you for sharing your concern about my colleagues. For us, until we have a conversation, and I want to be really clear, I say conversation. It's not about demands. It's about being in a room with people and actually starting to work out what the conversation is. Until that happens, I'm not willing to make a determination about what the outcome would be. I want to raise a case study with you, and I have been contacted by... Um, many parents and students, uh, and this has been provided to me on the basis of the person remaining anonymous. And so I would ask Professor Benville if, if you might be able to identify this person, but if I would ask you to keep that confidential. This person wrote, has written multiple times and wrote to you on the 1st of May, and I will just try to surmise what this person said, but this is a mother. She said, I'm extremely concerned about my child who sleeps on your campus while you allow pro-Palestinian students to camp on the grounds. And now the organisers have publicly and proudly announced on mainstream media that they are pro-Hamas. Are you aware that Hamas are a recognised terrorist group? The same ANU student organisers protesting on your grounds also don't condemn October 7 attacks meaning they condone murder of one, over 1,000 innocent civilians, including babies and the elderly, as well as abducting over 200 people who are still currently terrorising and raping. Today I saw footage of your students calling out for an intifada revolution on megaphones. Do you know what intifada means? How is your administration allowing for this? It is your responsibility to create a safe environment for our kids we pay a lot of money for that, and your university gets funding to create such a space conducive to study as opposed to anxiety and fear amongst a community of students who are being targeted. Why do our Jewish kids need to reach out to security and admin to chat about things? Why are you not addressing and holding these terrorist supporters accountable and calling them in for chats? This goes on. There's been a lot of correspondence between this particular parent and yourself. Uh, this encampment, this conduct, these use of terrorist slogans is causing enormous harm. And what you might see as peaceful, Professor, Vice-Chancellor, members of the Jewish community are frightened, they're fearful, they feel sickened, and that's just one example of what this is doing. So could I ask you to respond to the concerns of parents like this mother? Because this is having a profound and very damaging effect on many of your students and their families. Thank you for sharing that with me, Senator Henderson. I, much like you, find those hard words to listen to. And I'm sure my colleagues here also constantly worry about our students and our staff. 
we worry about creating a, a place that lives up to the mission of the university, which you know is about being a place of learning and research and teaching. And we are responsible in that way to think about how we balance academic freedom, which is at the core of the university, with creating and maintaining our code of conduct and our safe and responsible activities. In doing all of that, that means when we find clear violations of our code of conduct, we use our disciplinary proceedings. And as I said at the outset, Senator, we have re resorted to our disciplinary proceedings ten times in this space, and so we are working to be very clear about what is acceptable and what isn't.